Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can discuss the mental health and personality factors that may be at work with the fictional character Dexter Morgan. Other questions include, is Dexter a psychopath? Is his character realistic? And is his character congruent with what we know about serial killers? If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So Dexter Morgan is a fictional character from a book series by author Jeff Lindsay. The character was also featured in a television series. Michael C. Hall was the actor who played Dexter Morgan. There were eight books published from 2004 through 2015, and the series ran for eight seasons, 2006 to 2013. So I'll issue a spoiler alert for the books and the series. There are some differences between them. I've based this analysis primarily on how Dexter is portrayed in the TV series. So I'll look at Dexter's background, and then I'll move to the mental health and personality factors. So Dexter was born on February 15, 1971. In season eight, we see his birthday is referred to as 2-1-1971, so we see a discrepancy there. I like to think that Dexter was born on February 15, because that's exactly one year before my birth date. Dexter's mother was a police informant who had an affair with a police officer named Harry Morgan, but Harry Morgan was not Dexter's biological father. Dexter's father was a criminal who was addicted to substances. Dexter also had an older brother named Brian. Dexter and Brian see criminals kill their mother when Dexter is two years old, but Dexter does not remember that until many years later. Brian would eventually become a serial killer as well, but Dexter kills him in season one. Harry Morgan told Dexter that his parents were victims of a motor vehicle accident and that he brought him home directly from the scene of that accident. Harry and his wife Doris would adopt Dexter. Dexter starts killing small animals at age seven and Harry decides to embrace what he believes are Dexter's psychopathic characteristics. So Harry was really very understanding in the situation, not judgmental at all. Kind of surprising for a police officer not to be judgmental of somebody who he believes is going to grow up to be a killer. I think Harry Morgan took the phrase, I'll support you in anything, a little too literally. We see a danger here to positive thinking when it goes too far. Essentially, Harry Morgan decides to homeschool. I guess the Ted Bundy School for the Homicidally Inclined was not taking new applications. Harry tries to focus Dexter's psychopathic tendencies toward killing people who have committed murder by teaching Dexter something Harry referred to as the code. Eventually, Dexter expands Harry's code and kills other types of criminals, although all of them had violated society's norms to a severe degree. Later in the series, we find out that a Dr. Evelyn Vogel actually taught Harry the code based on research that she conducted. Both of Dexter's adoptive parents would die. Harry Morgan died when Dexter was 20. Dexter has memories of and internal conversations with Harry Morgan throughout the series. Harry was a tremendous influence on Dexter and really a source of guidance even in those memories and discussions. Dexter is a blood spatter analyst who works for the fictitious Miami Metro Police Department, so his job is to figure out what happened in a crime through the spatter pattern. In his spare time, he is a serial killer, but he's careful not to create blood spatter, right? So he's a very careful serial killer. Not only is he careful about blood spatter, he's careful in pretty much every way. Over the course of the eight seasons of the TV series, Dexter has a number of improbable adventures involving complex relationships with a number of other morally questionable figures, including other serial killers. Dexter is highly philosophical. He tries to figure out who he is, what his motivations are, who he cares about. It's really a journey of murder and self-exploration. Eventually, he concludes that he will always directly or indirectly bring harm to those that he cares about. Therefore, he decides to fake his own death and go live as a lumberjack. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. I'll first look at his five-factor model profile, his personality profile. I remember the five factors through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So with openness to experience, I would say that Dexter is pretty high on this trait. He's intellectually curious, 
somewhat creative, and has a lot of fantasy. For conscientiousness, he's also high, he has a good work ethic, and he's well organized. For extroversion, his level would be low. He's not particularly friendly, not outgoing, not assertive. He doesn't have too many positive emotions, although in one sense he is sensation-seeking. On agreeableness, his level would be low. He's not empathic. He does not trust people. He's not straightforward. But he is altruistic at certain times to certain people. For neuroticism, his level would be mid-range. He has some anger and quite a bit of depression, but overall he's not highly emotionally reactive. Let's take a look at some of the other characteristics of Dexter. Dexter has chronic feeling of emptiness, kind of like what we would see with borderline personality disorder, but I don't think he has that disorder, just that one symptom. This feeling of emptiness can only be temporarily filled through committing homicide. The series touches on the idea that Dexter enjoys killing, but sometimes it almost feels like he thinks of killing as a job, like there's another murder that he has to go and kill. It seems like a very stressful lifestyle. So he works full time as a blood spatter analyst, and then by night he's chasing these other killers and eventually committing homicide. Dexter is portrayed as having no conscience. He says that he's just acting when he has what looks like an emotional reaction. So his emotional reactions are not genuine. He really doesn't think of himself as a human at all. The way he relates to people at this level, the way he thinks of himself versus others, is a bit like what we see with the character Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. Data was an android who aspired to be a human. Dexter tries to connect with the part of himself that seems more human. In this sense, he really does want to become a true human, just like Data wanted to. He is searching for purpose in his life, a way to fit into society, and the manner in which he can connect to those who he believes he is supposed to love. In one way, Dexter desires to become normal, to beat psychopathy, or at least to be a more functional and pro-social psychopath. Dexter is particularly protective of children. He kills in order to protect them. He is also highly protective of his sister, and he was rattled by the loss of his wife, Rita. Dexter is not well liked by animals. They tend to find him repulsive, as if they can detect his dangerousness. This is emphasized a little bit more in the books than it is in the series. By the end of the series, as I mentioned, Dexter changes identity and hides, ostensibly to protect those that he cares about, essentially adopting the perspective that he is a monster who cannot change. In the last season of the series, Dexter meets Dr. Evelyn Vogel. As I mentioned before, she's the one who gave Harry the code. She created it based on her research of psychopaths. From what we can tell in the series, almost all of Evelyn's clients end up being serial killers. So it's hard to imagine she's really doing a good job. Do other counselors refer people to Vogel? So they would say, oh, you want to be a serial killer? I can't help you with that, but I know just the person. Kind of a strange specialty. She has a very fatalistic mindset. Even though Dexter's psychopathy had a genetic component to it, it also had a pronounced environmental component, namely the murder of his mother that he witnessed. Yet Dr. Vogel is focused on the idea that Dexter should embrace being a psychopath and live as someone who will continue to commit homicides. Eventually, she starts to see Dexter as somebody who is between two worlds. He's psychopathic, but he also has some emotional depth. She believes this is dangerous. She believes he can only really be one or the other, and he's essentially destined to be a psychopath, so he really doesn't have a choice at all. What's so interesting about the Dr. Vogel character is that when stepping back a bit, it seems clear that she jumped the gun when trying to address Harry's concerns about Dexter. She assumed that Dexter was going to become a killer. She narrowed Dexter's options to just going to an institution and being a murderer. So she helped Harry to make him a killer that would not get caught. Dexter may have had psychopathic tendencies, but Dr. Vogel may have made him into the killer that he was. Dexter is very unusual for a serial killer. He is portrayed as having intense homicidal urges referred to as the dark passenger but not having a sex drive. Most serial killers are driven by a need to dominate, specifically in a sexual manner. Yet that doesn't appear to be what motivates Dexter. 
He is instead motivated by some mysterious drive to kill people. So right away we can see he really doesn't fit with our understanding of a serial killer. He kills both males and females, who he targets because of their behavior. Therefore, his method of selection is also quite different than what we would expect. Most serial killers prefer targets who have specific attributes physically. They are almost never concerned with the target's behavior, like what they do for a living, if they're a criminal or not, or anything like that. Dexter also has an incredible level of insight for a serial killer. Most serial killers have some type of personality pathology. Therefore, it's not surprising they would have anosognosia, a lack of insight. Now, Dexter may have a personality disorder. I'll talk about that later. But it doesn't really match up with the lack of insight part. In a way, Dexter's insight is enhanced by remorse. He sort of feels badly that he keeps engaging in homicidal behavior. And this feeling leads him to contemplate the nature of his existence. Dexter is, I think, how people would hope a serial killer was. I think people like to believe that serial killers are highly philosophical and really struggle with their personality and their motivation. In reality, of course, this rarely happens. They don't spend their time worried about philosophical issues. In addition to being an unrealistic serial killer, Dexter is also an unrealistic psychopath, even though he's painted mostly as a primary or factor one psychopath in the series, he doesn't actually have too many characteristics from that type of psychopathy. If we look at factor one psychopathy, we see characteristics like being grandiose, being callous, unemotional, manipulative, a pathological liar, having fearless dominance, lacking in remorse, and failing to accept responsibility. He only seems to have the callous, unemotional characteristic, and he's lacking in remorse. Although, as I said, he does have some remorse. So, not a very good factor one psychopath in terms of alignment. He also only has one of the factor two psychopathic tendencies, namely criminal behavior. With this in mind about psychopathy from a diagnostic perspective, Dexter really doesn't fit too well with antisocial personality disorder, although technically his behavior aligns with four of the symptoms, which is enough. He has the repeated unlawful behaviors, deceitfulness, aggression, and lack of remorse. He does not have the impulsivity, the reckless disregard for others' safety, or the irresponsibility. Diagnostically, most serial killers do have antisocial personality disorder, but they also usually have comorbid conditions like substance use, narcissistic personality disorder, and disorders associated with psychosis, like delusional disorder. Dexter only has antisocial personality disorder, and even with that, it's an unusual presentation. If a television series ever did come out with a realistic depiction of a serial killer, it would be brutal and difficult to watch. There would be no witty internal dialogues, no intellectual elegance or sophistication, no philosophical exploration, but rather an indulgence in frightening, sadistic drives. In a way, Dexter presents the idea of a self-regulating serial killer paradigm. There are all these serial killers out there, but then one among them rises up and starts wiping them out. Dexter is not only a killer, but an exceptional detective, one that outclasses the police regularly in the series. In Dexter, we see a combination of characteristics from Sherlock Holmes, like being a detective, Hannibal Lecter, being polite, Darth Vader, someone who is conflicted, and the Terminator because of the level of precision. Entertaining, but an unlikely combination to see in real life. So those are my thoughts on Dexter Morgan. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching. So Harry Morgan decides to homeschool. I guess the Gary Ridgway School for Conscientious Killers had lost funding and closed. I guess the local serial killer ride-along featuring the Hillside Strangler got too many one- and two-star reviews. I guess that Richard Ramirez withdrew from the Big Brother program. I guess Harry thought it was better than buying the 90 Days to a More Homicidal You audio tape. I guess he was disappointed by the high arrest rate for recent graduates of the School for Philosophically Oriented Killers. I guess he noticed the mixed reviews posted about the David Berkowitz summer camp for aspiring murderers.